Welcome to Baja Window to the South. I'm Olga Sanchez de la Vega. And I'm Denitza Garcia. Baja Window to the South, it's a weekly program that showcases the best of Baja California. And now, Olga, we're going to check out Highway 1, this new monument that you can all see when you're going from Tijuana to Rosarito and Ensenada. Let's go check it out. We have a new monument in Baja. Highway 1, La Ruta 1, located at the scenic highway from Tijuana Beach, Playas de Tijuana, to Rosarito Beach, Playas de Rosarito, on your right-hand side on kilometer 14 in the La Jolla area. We recently went to the opening where the creator spoke to us about this project. Uh, we are very proud to uh, inaugurate this uh, piece of art on this day because today is the day of Dia de la Californidad. And, and we are making a few events regarding this, this date because it's the date when the first uh, Hernan Cortez soldiers named name, uh, Cabo San Lucas as California, Punto California. Yeah, and so this is the first time in Tijuana we are celebrating this, uh, this event, Dia de la Californidad, and, and, and we are inaugurating this uh, piece this day because we are so proud because it's the, the piece the highway that uh, uh, unites both entities, va California, va California Sur, and we're very happy to inaugurate the day today. Thank you. We are located in uh, kilometer 14. We are three kilometers after the toll booth. Toll booth in, uh, implies the, the, the Tijuana, and uh, we are inviting everybody to come and take the picture here because uh, everybody uh, will like this view. Uh, I will also like to tell you that uh, the sun in Mexico, the, 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 the last place where the sun sets is here. Because the, when the sun sets in Acapulco at 7 o'clock, here's, here's 5 o'clock, 5 p.m. In Mazatlán it's at 7, here it's at 6. So the final place where the sun sets in Mexico is here. So you can have a great view of San Diego, the islands of Coronado. So everybody's welcome to come and take the picture his own picture and then share it in the in Instagram or Facebook or anywhere. Yes. Of course there were others in the team to make this happen and they were all very proud to be part of the creation of La Ruta 1, Tijuana, Aquí Empieza La Patria, Highway 1, Here Begins the Homeland. Nos llamó a nosotros para colaborar en la construcción del, del monumento y con todas las ideas eh, y la experiencia que tenemos pues le dimos las lo mejor este, constructivamente ¿no? y visualmente para que quedara pues, eh, a las necesidades o al gusto de, del público. Esta es la idea principal, ¿no? es, aquí inicia el recorrido de la baja prácticamente y qué más que un, algo muy significativo este, eh, que se va a llevar uno en la memoria ¿no? en, en su inicio de viaje. Sí, para todos los California residents, um, this is for you also, so you can have a space where you can stop, relax for 10, 15 minutes, enjoy the nature, and then continue your way to Ensenada. Welcome, and welcome to Tijuana. Eh, Álvaro Montaño nos invitó eh, como eh, honorarios, invitados honorarios, eh, por el, el, tra el trayecto que tenemos del motociclismo, por transcurrir esta ruta 1, eh, nosotros como siempre andamos en moto, pues viajamos a diferentes ciudades y pues bueno, utilizamos esta carretera como nuestro medio de transporte y por eso es de que estamos ayudándole a, este, eh, a darle publicidad a la carretera, eh, tratando de hacer esto como en Estados Unidos es la Ruta 66. Desde el primer día que nos visitó el señor Montaño con este proyecto, nos enamoramos de él, porque si algo falta a Tijuana y a nuestra región, que somos gente de todas partes de México y del mundo, es precisamente reforzar nuestra identidad, sentido de pertenencia. Y este tipo de cosas, este tipo de monumentos, este tipo de, de acontecimientos, nos afianza más aún eso. No es solamente como una cuestión de derrama económica del turismo, sino como una cuestión de identidad y sobre todo de imagen para la ciudad. Y sobre todo también ver esta hermosa carretera que a veces los que estamos aquí viviendo no la apreciamos porque estamos acostumbrados a ver la belleza, pero en este caso habrá quien llegue todos los días a tomarse una foto y sea además un punto de referencia para que sea publicitar nuestra gran baja California. Thank you so much to all the people who made this possible. We really hope you stop by La Ruta Uno Monument to take a picture and enjoy this beautiful view. Hello everyone. 
Today we are going to talk with someone really special. They, they are a company called El Cuarto Fractal. Okay, he is a dancer. Also, well, he he does so many <laughs> things. Okay, he's gonna of course talk to us and speak because they have an event coming soon that we would like you to go most definitely. So, um, thank you so much Hi. for being Hi. here with us, Raul. Thank you for the invitation. <laughs> and um, can you please tell us what you do as a company, mm -hmm. okay. first of all? Sure thing. Uh, well, we are Cuarto Fractal, and we are an art company. We focus on dance and theater. However, we always are customer around to see what other art can bring to the stage, and we are glad to experience with that. Oh my God, no, thank you so much. Let me tell you that I really love dancing. I mean, in, in that expression that you do with your body and the movements, and I know there was an event coming soon. Yes. Um, on December the 2nd, I the believe. Second, Can yes. you please tell us about that? Sure thing, so it's our next premiere is the dancer and director of the company, Gabriel Ledon, who is going to do a solo called uh, Cardumen, which is like a lot of fishes moving around. So yeah, Cardumen is our next uh, premiere on December the 2nd in Cear Tijuana. Come to this side on the border, we have a lot of arts in coming. Okay, and we're most definitely gonna, you know, put the information right yeah. there, but tell us where we can get the tickets yes. and how much are the tickets and everything. Right. So the place is Cear Tijuana and you know, the price is in pesos, it's 150, which is seven dollars, seven bucks or something, uh, something around. Uh, a coffee price. Yes! And, and you can get the tickets in the box. So you just arrive early and you will have a ticket for you. And what time is it again? At 7 p.m. 7 p.m. on December... On, on 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Okay, yeah. it's 8 p.m. December the 2nd, right? Correct, right. Excellent. And well, can you please um, talk to us about the artist? Mm -hmm. I know, I mean, he's been dancing for so many right. years now and he is wonderful. So please. I'm more than glad to talk about my friend and teacher and director whose whom name is Gabriel Ledon. He's the director of the company and he has a lot of awards in dance, in art and poetry. So he has been doing a lot lately and dancing for almost 20 years, above 20 years. I don't want to speak more a lot of years, <laughs> but yeah, he has a lot of experience and I personally do admire him a lot. He can teach a lot without even saying the thing. So I will invite you to see what an artist can speak in artist language. And it's beyond the speaking of words. I think I'm going to be here in December the 2nd, most awesome. definitely to watch Gabriel. And, um, and we will tell you all about it. So I hope you can join us most definitely. And I know, I mean, besides this event that it's mm -hmm. coming, um, there's other show. things yeah. that you have coming up please tell us brazil <laughs> awaits you and uh, come on i want to know <laughs> yeah so there's a lot of things coming in the company that's what i do like about working in cuarto fractal please check our social media and our website uh, there's always a dance uh, show or projection and we do have a, a new premiere of a previous piece that we have called paracaidas and we'll be performing one more time on December 16th, and that's on me. So I really hope to see you. It's at the same time, 8 p.m., and the same price, a coffee, seven bucks. Excellent. So, December 16th, Paracaidas, same company, Cuarto Fractal, and this time it's me on the stage. Okay, Raul, and now can you please talk about yourself, about what mm -hmm. you've been doing when you start dancing? Uh -huh. Sure thing, so well, I start as an actor, and I was already in the university studying acting. And then I read about Stanislavski saying that dancers uh, can uh, uh, add so much to the acting. So I took a few ballet classes and jazz and contemporary. And all of a sudden was more a dancer than an actor. So I have been doing dance for 10 years so long and it's been fun. 
Wow, yeah. I love it. You know, I'm an actress as well. So awesome. <laughs> what can I say? You we know, can and yeah. I bet you do. You know, great things. You know, because you can get into character <laughs> even more. You know, and with yeah. the, mix with the dance. I don't know. I mean, you sure can create thing. so many great yeah. things. Raúl Bermúdez is also a dancer. Okay, <laughs> I'm here in, in their studio. Let me tell you, it's beautiful. This have they have this floor that is especially for dancers, right? So um, please. Um, Please uh, come on and join us. <laughs> I'll be there as well, okay? Awesome. Yeah. Because I really love dancing. And mm -hmm. um, what do you have coming up next year? Well, we have an open house before the year's ends. So we have posadas, you know, and we are in the holiday season. So we are always open to anyone who wants to speak with us after the show or in our open house in coming. We don't have date yet. And the next year, we have a little tour here in the, in the Baja California. So we're going to be in Rosarito, Ensenada, and other places because uh, Seart's DJ government helped us to the mobility of the show and also to the pre premiere in December the 2nd. And we have a, a few pieces going around in, in film festivals. That's our one in, in Brazil, and we have Paraguay and we have been in Mexico City and even before this project started Gabriel was already um, on the MoMA in New York showing a dance project, so a dance field project. So we have Wow, also, Gabriel and uh, Raul, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen from Cuarto Fractal International, okay? So that you can, I mean, they've been in New York, they're gonna be all over the place here in Baja. So please be aware of that and congratulations. Okay, I'm watching the videos and oh my <laughs> God, you guys are amazing. And I wish you all the best, all the success, okay? I always like to talk about talents from Baja California, okay? <laughs> and you guys are, are, are one. Uh, Great talent from Baja California, Thanks okay? Yeah. Is there something you want to add to our audience? Um, just keep tuned, keep checking uh, what we are showing and we'll be glad to show the best of our dance. If we can do some poetry around, we're always glad to put it out. No, most definitely. Yeah. And uh, in social media, where we can find you in social uh, media? On social media, we are Cuarto Fractal. You know, Cuarto is like a room, but also like the fourth place. Cuarto Fractal, you know, like fractals. <laughs> and that's us, Puerto Fractal, in Instagram, Facebook, and also if you Google it, you will definitely find our WordPress website. Excellent. Great. Well, thank you so much for being here with us in Baja Good Window enough. to the South. This was Puerto Fractal with Raúl Bermúdez. Please don't miss it, okay? <laughs> thank <laughs> Thanks you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to try some tacos of pork belly with Chef Richard. You can't miss this one. Bienvenidos una vez más, eh, los saluda Richard Chiñas, el chef ejecutivo de Lazo de Tinto. El día de hoy los vamos a, a, vamos a preparar unos tacos de por belly, glaseados con miel orgánica y los vamos a acompañar con una salsa deliciosa de chile habanero tatemado con tomatillo verde. Iniciamos. Vamos a, a poner a calentar el sartén, un poquito de aceite con ajo para darle sabor al por belly. Ustedes saben que el por belly pues tiene mucho mucho sabor y pues por lo regular hay que dejarlo freír un poco, ¿no? Para que tenga esa esa consistencia crocante y sabrosa. Y pues aprovechemos los los sabores del del puerco que sean agradables al paladar. Vamos a agregar un toquecito de sal, un toquecito de pimienta. Vamos a dejar que el por belly se, se empiece a caramelizar con la propia grasa.
mientras se va dorando el por belly, vamos a empezar a montar la base, que va a ser salsa de chile habanero tatemado. Vamos a poner. Vamos a ir calentando las tortillas. Ya que está un poquito dorado, le vamos a agregar un poquito de miel orgánica para que le dé ese sabor dulcecito y realce el, el, el sabor de, del puerco. Vamos a calentar las tortillas para empezar el montaje. Decoramos el plato. Este platillo aquí en el restaurante pues es de los más, más solicitados, digo porque a la gente pues le ha agradado el, el sabor que tiene. Entonces pues es parte de los estelares de, de la carta de lazo de tinto. ¿no? Decoramos con un poquito de, de brotes para darles otra, un saborcito así diferente. Y pues así están los tacos. A ver qué tal les parece el día de hoy. Nos vemos en la próxima con un taco muy a nuestro estilo. Well, hello everyone. Thank you much for, for joining us here in Baja Window to the South. I'm very happy today because I'm here with a super artist. I truly admire him and he is Antonio Proa. <laughs> thank, thank you so you. much for, for being with us. We're here at his gallery and I truly admire him and his art. So Antonio, and again, thank you. I was very excited to have this interview with you. Thank and you. Um, I would like to start, please, um, the art, what art means to you? Uh, first of all, thank you for coming to my studio uh, and also to my gallery here in Tijuana. And uh, for me, art, it's a, a language um, through I can uh, express my, my ideas and my feelings. And for me, since I was a kid, it's the most important uh, channel to, uh, to communicate with, with the world. Most definitely, and um, and I mean I can see like I said, very colorful, and uh, there's a and you said the technique, the thematic, uh, visual attraction, you know, that have in, in in your art. Can you please tell us what you get inspired by, or what you focus on, or what 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 do you like to transmit in your art, in your paintings? Yeah, normally um, I'm listening to uh, very good music every day since I wake up. Uh, inspiration comes from the music and uh, um, what, I, what I try to, to manage first of, on every project is uh, the color. Uh, I'm a colorist uh, and then I'm an, an, a painter but first I'm a colorist. The, the color for me it's a language inside the, the big language of, uh, of art. So um, it's light, and if you decompose light, it comes the color. Yeah. Okay, 
and then the magic happens, yeah, you know, because yeah. I can see that yeah, it's so, in all your so, paintings. So the journey starts making color for okay. every, every painting has its own colors. So uh, also every painting is, is kind of a window mm -hmm. that you can open the window and you can discover um, a whole universe. And please tell us, because I see Quixote, the Beatles, Jimi Hendrix, tell us about that. Yeah, um, what I try to do is to imprint a lot of movement on every painting. Uh -huh. That's my, my, my language. Movement, color, and uh, let's say um, strength. In, in my stroke, my brush stroke, it has to be very profound mm -hmm. and with a lot of strength. So uh, that, that's my... Um, Th that's my, my, my work, mm -hmm. that's my, um, how to say... Um, like the impact, la huella, que, or...? Uh, yeah, like, the, an element that, that I discover that uh, make, make, make my, my, um, my painting different. Okay, yeah. okay. That's a, a very good element. So, um, and inspiration comes from from the music, as I, I, I told you, mm -hmm. and uh, also uh, stories mm -hmm. that I hear, or my own stories, mm -hmm. and uh, that I want to tell, but not like um, with the same words, because I have these, these sensations, and I try to communicate through my paintings, um, tra transformed. You know, okay, no, um, most definitely, because, you know, yeah. I was, uh, for, for an example, Frida Kahlo, that uh -huh. we see Fridas all over the world, right? Oh, yeah. But it has something unique that it's, uh, it, it's you, you know? Yeah. I, oh, I have different collections. Yes. And they have uh, different uh, titles. For example, I have Dreamers, and they are... Drama. Drama. <laughs> I have... Uh, Love uh, drama, strength, by the way. <laughs> uh, the Surge. Uh, it, that, that's why you see a lot of different... Uh, p paintings mm -hmm. and also techniques and it, it is like uh, they were different artists but it's the same artist just different stories. Sto yes, yeah. most definitely yeah. and, and, and I love it and you were uh, telling us, I mean I know you also have a, a gallery or a place where you can find your art in Little Italy and yeah. many other places, right? And you have also exhibitions in different parts of the world. Yeah, uh, I was um, in, in Paris, in Bar Barcelona, uh -huh. Valencia, um, but mostly, uh, also New York, and Boston, and LA. But uh, when I did um, uh, more, more, more stuff, was on Paris. Okay, yeah. they well, love you in Paris. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I love them too because I, we had an exchange. Okay. So I, I, I went three times, and, and they come. To my studio and yeah. Oh wow! So it was it was a very good time. And, That's great. Uh, with but but then the 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 pandemia came. Okay. Yeah. So we had to stop, but we're not trying to to do it again. Get back yeah. on track, no? Yeah, get back on track. Yeah, yeah. that's great. But, but, and, and also, I mean, talking about getting back on track, you have an exhibition uh, coming soon in Rosarito that yeah. you can you know, um, check out that. It's on December uh -huh. 3rd and 4th uh, on the uh, Seart. Installations, okay. yeah. Okay, so art installations in Rosarito yeah. this December. We're uh -huh. gonna be around 50 different artists, different techniques, painting, uh, sculpture, and uh, it's gonna gonna be live music mm -hmm. and dancing. Great, yeah. great. And you also been in San Diego, uh, the Art Walk, oh, right? Oh yeah, the the best Art Walk uh, around uh -huh. the area. I mean, including Tijuana and San Diego, it's a little, 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 little show. Little, little, little yeah. show, okay, yeah. okay. It's just in front of the Mexican consulate. Mm -hmm. It's the Indian Street. Okay, uh, wow. A April, last weekend of April. Okay, last weekend yeah. of April, every year. Every so we year, can, yeah. we can find you there. And also please tell us, uh, Antonio, where we can find you, you know, in social media and... Yeah, on IG, mm -hmm. I am Art Antonio Pro, mm -hmm. uh, Facebook, Antonio Proa, like that, and my website is antonioproa.com. And thank you, thank you so thank much. You. Keep thank doing you. what you love and um, sharing your talents and your art. We're gonna be watching you most definitely, Antonio Proa. <laughs>
So now let's try some eggs Benedict with Chef Martin San Roman. Mm -hmm. Welcome again to Baja Window to the South. I'm Martin San Roman. Again, for you, I will be cooking something very nice. This is a Mexican French recipe. Why? Because we are going, uh, you know, the classic ex Benedict. Well, we are going to do a sope Benedict. And this is what we need to make them. I have a couple of sopes that we made right here at the restaurant. You know, made with a masa, or the boche masa. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to set it on the plate. I have some refried beans. We use the black beans. They were fried with a little bit of lard. So I'm gonna set up some of the fried beans. You know, this is very simple, but this is original from El Pastel de Crepas, okay? So next, we, we have a very nice chorizo or longaniza, either one you can use. So we're gonna put this in the middle. What I did is I fry them and then I, I just took the excess, uh, excess of fat. Then I will I have my poached eggs. They were poached as a regular uh, Benedict. So I'm gonna put it here on the top. You see how beautiful it looks. Then I have the second one. And then I have two salsas. I have a red tomato made uh, with chile d'arbol. Okay. So we're gonna, we're gonna put this on the top. Instead of using hollandaise sauce. And then I have a roasted tomatillo, green tomatillo salsa. You see how beautiful look the colors. And that's it. I'm just going to put some nice and fresh oregano. And just to finish it, I'm just going to put a little bit of paprika on the plate. And these ones are the Sope Venedict. So if you really want to enjoy this uh, Sope Benedict, well, you can visit us. We open from breakfast at eight o'clock in the morning to noon, Monday to Saturday, and then Sunday we will serve Sunday brunch. Thank you again. I will see you next time in another cookout in Baja Window to the South. So those sopes with eggs Benedict look amazing. Thank you, Chef Martin San Romar. So now, we're going to try to burn that out with Simon and let's try on some surfing. Hey guys, Simon here. We're right by the toll road and I'm gonna show you some amazing surf spots closer to Ensenada. So we're gonna get in the car and we're gonna go check it out. Get ready to see some awesome surf spots. Hey guys, Simon here, and today we're at our first surf spot, La Fonda, also known as Alecitos. So, Alecitos is located about roughly 60 kilometers south of the toll road, and what's unique about this spot is it breaks all year round. So no matter summer, winter, big or small, this is a place that you can rely upon, and every time you come here, you're gonna be able to surf something. So a couple things to kind of uh, watch out for is one, it is a beach break, but it breaks pretty far out. So when you're paddling out, you wanna make sure that you can deal with the white water and just be prepared for a long paddle. Another thing is, when you come to this surf spot, it's gonna be different every time you come here. So some days it's gonna be big and heavy, some days it's gonna be relaxing for the longboard. So just make sure, take some time, check the conditions before you go out. If you're a beginner in advance, just make sure you're, you know what you're getting into. 
Besides that, it's an all-round good spot. It's a beach break, lefts and rights. It breaks, like I said, all year round. North swells, south swells. It's, it's your all-rounder. If you go down the coast and you can't find any waves and you, you're desperate, you want to surf, if you come here, guaranteed you're going to get good waves. The only thing I would recommend is come in the morning. Of course, the earlier you get on it, the better the conditions are going to be. So besides that, yeah, I hope you can check it out. Have a good time. It's usually not a lot of crowd, which is a big plus. And yeah, that's all for La Fonda. It's an awesome spot. I personally like coming here sometimes just to chill out on the beach with an umbrella, with some friends, and go surf, come back. It's just a nice, really relaxing vibe here. So I recommend you come check out Alecitos, also known as La Fonda, and have a great time surfing. What a beautiful surf adventure with Simon at Alicitos. You know, it's one of my most favorite places to go and surf here in Baja. Wasn't that beautiful? Amazing, I love it. Thank you, Simon, and thank you everyone for joining us one more week here in Baja Window to the South. We cannot wait to see you next week, and don't forget to comment, share, and go to the places where we're showcasing to you. See you next week.